My name is Emmeline Pankhurst, and I was born in 1858, in industrial Manchester and was the oldest girl in a family of 11. I was one of the most significant voices of the early 20th century as through my pioneering work as leader of the suffragettes, I secured the right for women to vote. From a young age, I was exposed to the inequality and injustice faced by women in society, and it ignited a fiery passion within me to fight for women's rights. Both my parents were politically engaged, particularly in campaigning against slavery and supporting women's right to vote. As a child, my mother would take me to suffrage meeting and expose me to relevant readings such as the Women's Suffrage Journal. I was sent to Ecole Normale Supérieure finishing school in Paris. Other than being my director, March F. Gerard believed that girls should be educated as well as boys were. I included chemistry and other sciences in my course. In my early adult years, I met Richard Pankhurst at one of the suffrage meetings. Richard was a lawyer and a supporter of women's suffrage. We married within months, and together we had five children, and my commitment to the cause only grew stronger as I witnessed the limitations placed on women's lives and opportunities. Richard did not want me to be a household machine and supported me in my choice to be a militant. In 1903, I founded the Women's Social and Political Union, WSPU, a militant suffrage organization that aimed to achieve votes for women in Britain. We adopted the slogan, Deeds, Not Words, and our actions were bold and daring. We held protests, rallies, and demonstrations, including window smashing and arson, and I often found myself arrested for my activities. Perhaps unsurprisingly, fellow suffragettes and myself were frequently arrested and forced to spend periods of time in prison. While in prison, we went on hunger strike. This in turn led to violent force feeding. As a reaction to our hunger strikes, the British government set up the Cat and Mouse Act, for which prisoners known for refusing to eat would be regularly released and re-arrested once they had regained their health. This process led me to be arrested and released 12 times within a year. I was also arrested on three separate occasions for breach of the peace. The struggle for women's suffrage was not easy. We faced opposition, ridicule, and sometimes violence. Yet, we persisted, determined to make our voices heard and demand our right to vote. My speeches and impassioned pleas resonated with women across the nation, and our movement gained momentum. My daughters Christabel, Sylvia and Adela were also committed members of the WSPU and active participants in the suffragettes cause. Christabel and myself worked closely together from the early days of the WSPU, and she became one of the group's most outspoken voices. In 1914, Sylvia formed the socialist group named the East London Federation of Suffragettes, ELFS, which allowed her to continue the fight for equality. However, the fight for suffrage reached a turning point during World War I. With the outbreak of war, I shifted my focus to support the war effort, believing that women's contribution to the war would strengthen our case for voting rights. In 1918, my efforts bore fruit when the Representation of the People Act granted the vote to women over 30 years old who met certain property qualifications. Though a significant step, I knew our struggle was not over. I continued advocating for universal suffrage, and in 1928, 10 years after I passed away, the Equal Franchise Act finally granted all women in Britain the right to vote on equal terms with men. My life's mission had been fulfilled, and my legacy as a prominent suffragette and activist for women's rights lives on. The fight for gender equality goes on, and I hope that my story serves as a reminder that ordinary individuals can spark extraordinary change when they unite and strive for a just and equal society.